So we are in the portion of Kitisa. Kitisa, it's a long portion, one of the longest portion in the Torah. So what do we have in here? Let's start the story. The first thing God is telling Moses, make sure when you raise the head, the head of the Israelite, while you're counting them, you gotta give, everybody gotta give machatita shekel, meaning half a shekel. Why half a shekel? We already explained it on Purim. Uh, those of you listen to the video, to connect through the charity to life. And through that, you remove yourself from the curse of the plague, of the disease. That's why uh, those of you who connect to us, having the wallet, I hope all of you have it, a small scroll that say Nugife. You gotta carry it wherever you go. If you can put, if you can afford more than one, put one on you, one in your car, one in your front of the door like we have, like put it on one of the picture, hide it there, okay? So no Nugife, no negative angel come into your domain. We're gonna explain it in a second. Uh, then we're talking about charity, after that, the Kohanim, the tabernacle. And then we come to a very important part with Moses, go up to the mountain to receive the two tablets, the first one. And he's there for 39 days and 18 hours. When you go down, The people start looking for God. And what happened with people looking for God? They create God. They create something called the golden calf. Sad story. And uh, then God said to Moses, those people are no good. They don't have a bond of spirituality in them. They don't have a force of sharing in them. So God tell him, Let's get rid of everybody. And I built for you the nation called the Israelite. And Moses come up with the idea and say, God, come on, can't do that. Then people speak bad about you. They will say you took them to the, to, to out of Egypt and you couldn't handle them. And that's why you killed them. So I don't, I, don't, I don't get this excuse. I mean, God can change the mind of people off him, right? And what is exactly... It's so important for God what people think of him. I mean, why, why is that? So the idea uh, is to, to understand more, you know, a marketing of a person. When you think about marketing of a human being, what is a marketing? Is how people perceive you, your reputation. So Moses want to build the reputation of God. I mean, today, God's reputation is basically nothing. People come up with the idea of what it's God, and they enjoy with their ego to, that they guess what God is, and they get high from that. Oh, my God, let me tell you, I was meditating, talking to God. God never took back to them, but they think God talked to them back to them. It's actually, they talking back to themselves, they asking questions. They're totally insane. So they call it spirituality. What can I say? So when you take the Nugife, Nungife or Negev, the word Negev, it's a plague. We don't want plague. What is it written? God telling Moses, Kitisait Rosh Adat Israel, if you raise the head of the Israelite, what is raising the head? The mind, the consciousness, the awareness, the existence, where you are. You have to raise the bar. And when you're raising a bar, sometimes it's tough because there is a weight on it, you know, the bar of weight, okay? I'm not talking about bar, it's eating bar, okay? You have to raise the bar. I'm not talking about lawyer either. So, you need to understand something with your mind has to change. How does the mind change? Very good question. It's called decision making. You gotta get to a decision making from your mind. You know, the head of uh, police 
in Jerusalem, and the head of police in Israel, in uh, Tel Aviv. The head police in Tel Aviv is my cousin. The head police in Jerusalem was there for us, those of you who remember, two years ago, three years ago, and he took us all the way to the Mount of Olive uh, during the Ramadan. It's very tough to do during the Ramadan on Friday. Those of you who remember, I hope you appreciate that. That was an unbelievable trip. We did all of it on Friday. And the reason I'm saying it is because sometimes in your life there is synchronicity. And you meet the right people in the right time for things to work for you. But what makes the police in Jerusalem, what makes his mind help us? The group was very unified. The group was very happy. The group was very fulfilled. The group has desire. So you, when you organize those things, it's not enough to have desire because then you go all over the place. You have to have unity, you have to have kindness, you have to have peace. All of those things add a lot to what you can do with your life. So Kitishait Rosh, Kitishait Rosh, you have to elevate the Rosh, the Rosh being the head. Now, if you look at the Negev, the Benish Chai, one of the Kabbalists that live in Iraq, one of the greatest Kabbalists, and I think his books are in English as well, and I highly recommend you get all his books and study, if you like to study Torah. So he writes like this. He says, why is God telling Moses that people have to give charity to be saved from the plague? It seemed like a little money-oriented situation. Maybe that's how synagogue, churches, and mosques started. I mean, charity seemed to save you from death. It seemed like a good deal, but is it always save people from death? I met people who gave a lot and life get worse. I met people who gave a lot and their life become like, oh my God, unbelievable. I know women who gave charity and become pregnant after 20 years they try to get pregnant. I know people who have been sick and they gave charity and all of a sudden they get cured. So... Maybe there is a message here, but why some people do get it, ask the Ben Ishrai, and some people don't get it. Is there is a formula for this? That's what Ben Ishrai write. When you take the word Negev, right? Negev is 50, 3, and 80. What do we got together? 53 and 80, what do we have? 133. 133, yeah. 133. When you took the word nedava, not tzedaka, nedava. Nedava comes from the word lenadev, to be uh, kind. Kind, let's say when I took it to the uh, uh, graveyard of the Rothschild family to meditate for money, he doesn't say the most charitable guys, he say the nadiv ayadua, the non nadiv. Nadiv is generosity. So instead of saying tzedaka, Benish used the word generosity. When you mix the two words, say the Ben Ishchai, generosity plus chesed, you get 61 with 72. What is, what is that? 133. So you write these two words preventing disease. So you ask, the Ben Ishchai ask a question. Why? You give, and it's not working for everybody. Very good question, because he writes that charity has two levels. There is people who give charity with generosity and with love, with chesed. And there is people who give charity with fear, and they don't want to do it. So it's not always going to create the miracle they want. So what's the question here? If somebody pushed me to give and I give, is it work? A little bit but not as strong as when you give it with love, say, the Ben Ishrei. The Ben Ishrei say that if you take Nedava, which is 61, mix it with Chesed, which means kindness, you remove the plague. And he said, that's the way. Ben Ishrei say, that's the way. So from now on, I know a lot of you give charity. Please meditate before. Stop. Say, I'm doing it because I love doing it. Don't do it because maybe. Like my son saw me the other day, doing before Purim, while I'm fasting, I was going around the neighborhood to look for poor people because do, before Purim you're supposed to give a lot of charity. And I came back home and I was very depressed. I couldn't find poor people. 
I tried to wake up even uh, one poor person who sleep on the street. It's not nice to wake them up. I say, hello, excuse me. I'm supposed to give charity. Please help me. It's, it's, I look really weird, you know. But in the end, I could give other people and people who came here. So I was very happy. And I could give in a synagogue where I went to pray. I was really extremely happy. The idea, when you can give with the happiness, it's a game changing. If you give, let's say tithing, you have to give. It's not charity. You have to give. You're not even a maybe. You have to give charity. You have to give charity. You have to. And how do you know that your tithing is good? How do you know your tithing is good? You have to be rich. Let's say, let's say you want to give thirty thousand dollar tithing. You just made three hundred thousand. You want to give thirty. How would you know that? But you have to be certainty while you do it with love. So you take the old thirty, you give it for uh, tithing. Then you have to see that two hundred seventy thousand dollars that you stay with have to start growing. In one year, it's supposed to be five hundred. That's how you know that your tithing is working. Okay, I hope you understand that. So that's preventing plague. If you want to prevent plague, that's the way to do it. Now, those of you who are uh, before Passover want to start giving charity in this kind of way, what we call nedava, or the Argentinian call it ajur, I think they call it there, nedava. So you have to do it right. Meditation is that the money itself is the letter Yud. The hand of the giver is Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, A. What is it? A. The letter A. That's the hand of the giver. So now we have the money inside your hand. Yud. The hand, A. The receiver is the letter Vav. The receiver is the letter Vav. And the hand of the receiver is Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, A. A, the letter A. Now we have the name of God, the Tachigamatan. Yud, K, Vav, K. So when you give the charity with that kind of consciousness, even if you do it online, just meditate. See yourself like you're giving it to me or to Debbie or to somebody here in the organization and meditate that this is your Yud, this is the A. If you're sending check or something, it's a different story. Then the check itself is the yud, okay? And your hand put it in the envelope is the A. And when Debbie open it or I open it, we have to meditate the Vav and A, receive it. By this, you complete the circle of the charity. So why is the portion start like that, right? I mean, we are about to talk about the, the golden golden calf. Why is the portion is to start with all about charity and removing plague? Simple. There is always prevention before negative things happen. You have to be worried. When things going well for you, that's been is a gift that God sent you before a storm. A lot of time, God for saving you from biggest problem that might happen to you, is send you a people that you can do nedavatu, you can be generous with. And to that, he's saving you from problem. I don't know if it ever happened to you. I'll tell you what happened to me, you know. I have so many stories. I hope one time somebody will be brave enough to sit with me and get those stories out of me, and we can write so, so many books. One of the story happened to me when I was with my friend uh, Abraham in uh, Uruguay. The, the city is between uh, Punta del Este and Montevideo, those of you familiar with South America. And uh, it's Thursday night, and we're looking for where we can buy bread. And uh, we found that there is Chabad, who bake bread. We're going there, and we're buying a lot. It's pretty cheap. And after we buy the bread, and we're waiting for the baker, it's uh, one person there. It's an unbelievable job. When you're surrounded by the wrong people, mostly liars, liars, it's a problem because liar can have somebody who lied to you and there's somebody who lied to themselves. And somebody who lied to you, that's, that's a survival skill. People sometimes have to do that, you know. A son asked his mother, 
uh, where did you go last night? Well, she went to make love to her husband. Can she answer her son where she go? No, so you have to use a white lie. But if she lied to herself, that's dangerous. If you lie to yourself, it's dangerous. So when your community or your people around you are not real, eventually you will become a liar. You become not real because things affecting you. For that reason, in every community, in every school, in every place, you need a leader that you look up to. That leader doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect ever. Moses is not perfect, nobody's perfect. But at least that leader should not lie to themselves about who they are. And so people, people tell me, oh my God, uh, six weeks ago, I think David told me, you're really scaring me the way you talk. People really got scared, David told me. I said, good, I want to scare you. That's me. That's me. Now, some people like it, some people don't like it. It's, I'm not here to make you like me. I'm not a model jumping out of the magazine of Vogue. Say, how do I look? Oh, you like me? That's not my job here. My job is to shake you. That's my job sometimes to scare you. My job is to motivate you. I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not Les Brown. Their job is just to tell you that you got a future. You got a future. You got to believe. Be, 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 have another business card. You have to get what you want. You have to get. I'm not telling you to get what you want. I'm actually telling you how to get not what you want. You know. So it's a very different goal. The spirituality is a different. It's spirituality is rediscovering who you are internally. If your success is about the outside, you're not going to be happy. But if your success is about the inside, you will be happy. You know how many people cheat me every day, and I look the other side. What are you going to tell them? Last time I told somebody, I proved to them how. Lying there, they end up in hospital. You know, when somebody shows you in your face that you're lying to yourself, that's scary. It's really scary because you wake up to say, oh my God, I thought that I'm that, but I'm actually not. Most people who come to co to work as a coach with me, I always tell them, are you ready to accept that you don't know yourself? And if they don't, then I'm talking to them, we talk about coffee and cappuccino, and that's it. But if they really want to do a change, I'm always there for them. There's no human being who commit to do a change that I didn't help them in 10 times. 10 times. 10 time. Their life is changing. They become different people. And I hope uh, you can talk to them. We should do like a video from them, what changed with me after the coaching. I think it would be good. Anyway, so when you connected to the wrong people, then you lose, but you don't even know you lose. And for that reason, a person who's going to a tough time should not ask what's going on, should ask themselves why are they there? Why they're in this situation? Because the surrounding of a person is one of the only free will that you have, say Rav Ashlag. Okay? Your husband, your wife, your friend, what type of community. But when a liar doesn't know that he lie, that's the most dangerous person to themselves and to others. A liar who cannot admit that they lie, what we call coward, those are the people who will destroy the world. If you ask the guy in Germany if he did something wrong, he would not know what you're talking about. You ask all those dictators, they don't know that they're doing something wrong. Because they lie to themselves that that's okay. It's not that they're evil, they're liars. So the liar is the mother of all evil. But there is a different type of lie. You want to lie to your son that you have sex, but you don't want your son to know? That's a different lie. You can do it. It's a white lie. Don't worry about it. But don't lie to yourself. You destroy your life by this. You destroy people's life. Because when you start lying to yourself, you're going to be cruel. You're going to kill people without even knowing. I remember I met a woman uh, 27 years ago. 27 years ago. Yeah. Marie, her name is Marie. I don't know if you, I don't think she listened to it. And um, she lied to herself a lot. So those of you who know me, I'm very confronting when I, I, I don't, either I ignore you or I confront you. Usually if I confront you many times and I see nobody's home, I usually quit. But people who lie to themselves give the allergy. So she keep lying to herself. And I said to her, stop, 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 stop. And she said, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. It's okay. She went to the car. She drove. It was Queens. And she hit the child. 
She asked me to go with her to court. Oh my God, it was such a mess. You have no idea. And she said, I, they told me you can make miracles. I cannot make miracles. I'm a human being. So I go there, and miracle happened. Now she really started to believe in me. What happened? The police was the witness, was sick. They dropped the case. The kids was okay. He didn't die. I mean, it was uh, hurt his ankle, but that's it. He was okay. What I'm trying to tell you, she was lying to herself. And I was there in her life as much as I could be, because I like to serve. That was one of my, my issue. And uh, at one point, she went and she started working on changing her life. And she called me. She said, nine years later, I, I should listen to you. You make me so pissed every time you mention that I lie to myself. And uh, I should listen to you. I, I cannot tell you all her problem because she have a lot of problem after that. You need to understand that you can lie to yourself because you're going to be cruel to others. That's what the guy in Germany did. That's what the guy in Russia did. That's what the guy in every country with a dictator, they lie to themselves. And that's how they get to this situation. I hope this week we're not going to build a golden calf. We're not going to build something that we think that's the solution. The solution is never out there. That's what uh, I went to the Vatican and uh, I went with a person who showed us around and I saw the beautiful Vatican. This, for me, it was empty, but some people like it. It was nice art and nice thing, but I didn't feel excited. I need to tell you this, like, we have to be real here. I mean, you should walk with me into many things if you, somebody should work with me and say, what's the real Eliyahu? I will reveal it to you. I think my, my family and my 12 devoted students are the only one who know me. So he says something so beautiful. And he saw that we are Jewish and Orthodox. So he said, you know, in synagogue, there is no picture like here. In synagogue, there is no, nothing. It's just a flat room, and you pray. And I wanted to say it this Shabbat, but I forgot. And what is it telling you that, and I asked him, what do, you, what do you mean by that? So you people, when you pray, you find God in your heart. Sometimes when we pray, we need to find the God on the wall. And I love it, what I say, what he say. And I found it very deep. When you start working on yourself, you discover something internal. When you are fake it, you're, something, you're finding something external. So idol is when you look for external change. That's idol. I love you people. And hopefully you got the lecture. Thank you. And have a beautiful, beautiful week.